All right, Advanced Math A, here we go. We've got Lesson 3.2.2, the area model. All right, so this is similar to what we were doing on the last lesson. We want to find the area and the perimeter of these tiles here. So this has an area of Y. This has an area of XY. So this must be Y over here. This must be X over here. And these are 1s. So looking at my total area, I've got 1 of the XY's, so XY. I've got two of the X's, so plus 2X. I've got two of the Y's, so plus 2Y. And then my final part of my area is these, so plus 2. For the perimeter, there's actually a couple ways we can do the perimeter. First way we can do the perimeter is, okay, so this is y here, so this is going to be a y, and this is going to be 1. This one's xy, so this is y, and then that means this is x up here, because it's x times y, so x times y, this would be xy, this would be a 1, this would be y. And then over here, I've got 1 and 1, 1 and 1 and 1, and one, and one, and one, and one, and one, and one, and one. Whew, lots of ones over there. So, looking at our perimeter, we can say that there is one of the x's. There are two of the y's. And then let's count all the singles. One, two, I'll just go around. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's one way to do the perimeter. There is a second way to do the perimeter. I notice here that this section here, these two sections here, and this one section here, those three sections together would make the length of X. So from here to here, that is X. So we actually know the, the distance of X. X is 1, 2, 3, 4. So instead over here, I can say, okay, my perimeter is two X's, two Y's, and then how many singles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we didn't use this one, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we added an X for this orange part here, and we knew that that orange part was four singles together, so that's why our singles went down by four. So either way, those would be ways that you can show the perimeter of that. All right, so here we go. Here's what we're really doing today. So this one is put into a nice rectangle there. It tells us that this part is x squared. So all of these look like they're x squared. So this is x squared. This is x squared. All right, so I've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My area has 8 of the x squareds. So that means this side's x and this side's x, and then all four of these are x's as well. So when we look up here, these little long rectangles up there, this must also be x because this part down here was x, and these are probably 1's. So I've got a ton of little x areas right here because it's 1 times x. So I got all of these X areas there. Now the height over here is X and it looks like the length over here is one. Where the base is one. So all of these are also one times a distance of X there. So these are all X's. They're just laid in a different way. And then we're left with all of these must be one by one. 
So this is one area of one, 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 one. Looks like 15 different little ones. All right, so let's look at what how many x's we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we have 22 x's. And then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So our area for that rectangle would be 8x squared, because there's 8 of the x squareds. We've got 22 of the x's. And then we've got up here, we've got a little bit up there. We've got 15 of the ones. All right, our perimeter for this one. Now, since this is a rectangle, we can look at it as this entire side here. There's one, two x's, and one, two, three, so two x plus three. This entire side here has four x's, and one, two, three, four, five. So this is four x plus five. And since it's a rectangle, that means this side would also be two x plus three, and this side up here would be four x plus five. So our perimeter would be 2 of the 2x plus 3s and 2 of the 4x plus 5s here. So my perimeter here, 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4x is 8x, and 2 times 5 is 10. So my final perimeter, when I combine my like terms, 4x and 8x makes 12x, because those are like terms. And then 6 and 10 are like terms, and that makes 16. So we get a total of 12x plus 16. And you can count your individual x's as you go around if you want to, but combining them is probably an easier way to do it. All right, and now we get to the area model. The area model is another way to find the area without finding all the individual X's and all that good stuff. So without doing all the inside work that we've done here. What we're gonna do on the area model is split it up into four parts. And we're just gonna say, okay, so this side was two X plus three, so that's two different terms. One of my terms is two X, the other term is plus three. So this has a length of two X, this has a length of three, Sure, they're not supposed to be like the exact same length, but whatever. We're just saying this is a 2x length, this is a 3 length, and not worrying about that they're like equal size or whatever. Now this side was 4x plus 5, so this is 4x and then plus 5. So at this point, what we can do is, well, if this length is 2 and this length is 4x here, this box here would just be... 2x times 4x, which is 8x squared. This box here would be 3 times 4x, which is 12x. This box here would be 2x times 5, so this would be 10x. And then this box here would be 3 times 5, which is 15. So what's my area? Well, my area consists of the four areas, 8x squared, 12x, 10x, and 15. So 8x squared, I notice that I have like terms right here. So 12x plus 10x is 22x, and then plus 15. What did I get earlier? The same answer. So I could count out my individual areas in here, or I can just break them down into terms and then multiply the terms by each other. All right, so now we're gonna use the area model to multiply. So we're gonna multiply x plus five times two x plus three. So I'm gonna set up a little area model. On one side, I'm gonna put x plus five. There's my two terms from this binomial. 
my other binomial is 2x plus 3, so 2x plus 3. So in this square here, this would be 2x times x, which would be 2 times x squared. This square here would be 5 times 2x, so the area of that square is 10x. The area of this squared is x times 3, which is 3x. And the last area would be 3 times 5, which is 15. So my final area is 2x squared. We're going to combine our like terms. 3x and 10x are like terms. So we get 13x and then 15. Next one. This time we have a monomial times a binomial. So when I set up my area model, I only need two boxes because 3 will go on this side and then y plus 5 will go on this side. So we're just going to take the 3 and multiply it by the y and get 3y and then 3 times 5 would be 15. So my final uh, multiplication for this would be 3y plus 15. Final product. Alright, this one's a little bit different. Because now I've got a binomial, so I need two things on this side, but then I have a trinomial. So that means that I'm going to need three things going this way. So I'm going to end up with six squares here. So this one's going to be 4y minus 7 over here. So there's my binomial. Then I'm going to put my trinomial over here. 6y plus x plus 1. So this square here would be 4y times 6y, which is 24y squared. This one would be negative 7 times 6y, which would be negative 42y. This is 4y times x, which would be 4xy. We always put our letters in alphabetical order. This one right here would be negative 7x. This one here would be 4y. And this one right here would be 1 times negative 7, which is negative 7. Now, do we have any like terms? Yes, we do. We've got like terms right here. All right, so my final answer for this one would be 24y squared, 4xy, 7x, and then I've got negative 42y and positive 4y, so that means negative 38y, and then minus 7, and there's my area. What if I have a 1 by 1? Well, that would just be a square, right? x and 2x. x times 2x is 2x squared. There's my answer. All right, we've got a few more problems. So what I want you to do is I want you to try these out on your own. And then, so pause so that you can try these out on your own, and then I'll show you the answers to them. All right, so I'm going to pause. You need to work on these on your own and see how you do, and then you'll come back and check your answers. All right, so I'm going to pause it right now. So pause your screen so you can do them yourself. All right, pausing now. All right, here's our answers. First one, we set it up x plus 1 times x plus 2, so we get x squared, x, 2x, and 2. Our like terms are right here, so this is 1x plus 2x, that makes 3x. So x squared plus 3x plus 2. Second one, we only have a monomial times a binomial. So 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times 5 is 15. So 6x plus 15, nothing's like terms, so we don't combine anything. Next one, we got a binomial times a binomial. So 2x minus 3 and x plus 2. So this would be 2x times x, 2x squared. Negative 3 times x, negative 3x. 2x times 2, 4x. And negative 3 times positive 2, negative 6. We have like terms here. 4x minus 3x is 1x. So we get 2x squared plus 1x, or just plus x, minus 6. 
For this one, we're going to do x minus 1 times y minus 1. This box here would be x times y, xy. This one would be negative 1 times y, negative y. x times negative 1 is negative x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. None of these are like terms. So I've got an xy minus x minus y plus 1. Here we have a monomial times a binomial. So we do negative 2y times y is negative 2y squared. Negative 2y times 3 is negative 6y. Those are not like terms. So we just write them down. Last one, we've got negative x plus 1 times 3x plus y minus 4. So this box is negative 3x squared. 1 times 3x is 3x. Negative x times y is negative xy. 1 times y is y. Negative x times negative 4 is positive 4x. And then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. We do have like terms. The 3x and the 4x are like terms. So I did negative 3x squared, negative xy. These two combine to give me 7x plus y and then minus 4. There you go, guys. So that's all I got for you. Practice it up. Do your work. And I'll see you next time.